I, I could have just camped out in several of them. I actually should have been taking notes, but then I would have gotten distracted and we'd still be on question number one. <laughs> Here we are, Three Questions, episode 12. A good friend, a dear prophetic voice in the body of Christ, someone who really carries the heart of the Father in the prophetic, David Wagner. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, man. Hey, it's great to be with you, David. It's always a joy to do uh, life with you and life and everybody at Kingdom Family. So. Maybe just, yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, we'll get going. All right, well, uh, I live in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. And I just moved there about 11 months ago after being in Pensacola, Florida for 20 years. Uh, got radically saved in uh, January of 1997. Uh, committed suicide, dropped dead, and uh, after two and a half days in a coma, the Lord brought me back. And, um, and I just remember praying this prayer, God, if you can love me when I can't love myself, I'll serve you the rest of the days of my life. And put a call on my life and started me on a journey. And uh, I've been in full-time ministry most of the time I've been saved so saved for 22 years and in ministry traveling uh, 68 countries of the of the world so far in, over the last 20 years uh, seeing lives change people healed and uh, just just uh, revealing the heart of the father to the nations I think is what we're called to do I thought I had my phone on mute <laughs> sorry David really um impacted our lives, gave us one of the most significant prophetic words of our life a couple of years ago. And uh, I just want to thank you for that, bro. We, we, we go back to that word daily. One of the things you said in that word was, is that we would, we would do things that haven't been done. And so when we're making life decisions, you know, it's, um, we lean into the heart of God and we think, you know, is this something that's been done before? If it is, how can we take our special sauce, so to speak, and make it different? Or how can we relate to something in a way that maybe maybe it's something that has been done before, but we want to think about it differently. We, we want to see, we, we look at where things are, but we want to also see where they're going and see that trajectory. And we want to kind of surf that thing and, and hopefully capture God's heart in the process. So thank you for that word. Um, I think my theme today is actually fathering the prophetic. And, um, you know, I don't know if I had to have a better person on here to talk about a subject like, like that other than you. Question number one, I have a cheat sheet over here. So <laughs> I think you had a really good um, relationship with your spiritual father. Can you explain how that dynamic activated your gifting and continues to influence your ministry today? Yeah. You know, my, uh, my spiritual father um, make me cry for the first question, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, his name was Lyndall Ballinger and uh, he was in, in ministry for 50 years of his life and uh, went home to be with the Lord actually um, five years ago on Saturday so uh, went home on Pentecost Sunday and uh, he, he his best friend was the Holy Spirit he loved the presence of God and uh, he was a bigger than life minister but also a bigger than life father and um you know i i showed up at his church broken rejected orphaned all of those things and he just saw something in me that i couldn't see in myself and uh, he knew how to draw that out of me i uh, gave me a lot of my first chances of of just to to minister and allowed me to get it wrong and corrected me when i did he taught me that correction wasn't rejection and um That's which good, was a man. huge huge issue in my life and yeah um and i'll never forget august 19th of 1999 uh, it was a back to school sunday uh, in pensacola and a uh, night night service and there's about 100 150 people lined up for just being commissioned to go back to their schools and i got a prophetic word for every uh for every person in the line Wow. My past, pastor and his son, who's now my pastor, uh, looked uh, at each other and said, oh, my goodness, David's not a pastor. He's a prophet. And they knew exactly what to do with me. And um, so they they celebrated my victories as their own. They they loved me. Um, even to this day, it's, it's it's never been, where are you going this weekend? What are, where are you going? But it's always, where are we going? 
um, because wow. because being a family, being a father and son, it's uh, you know one of us may go, one of us may stay, but but we're, we're both doing the work, and uh, I wouldn't be me without without him. Uh, even in moments where uh, I failed, he would you know uh, he would say to me, "Failure is never final where there's a father." And um, those, wow. the, those, that. those rich revelations, and uh, watching him live it out, you know, he he imparted that to me. I love what Leif said. You know, we we teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. And um, I didn't just learn what he knew, but but I caught who he was. And uh, to wow. this day, I, I really want to live to to honor that legacy. And so I've I've grabbed a baton as his. Uh, his son and uh, his his natural son is pastoring the church now. His daughter is is co-pastoring, running uh, running a race as well. And and that's so Jubilee um, Pensacola. that's Pensacola. Jubilee in Pensacola. And, yeah. Uh, you know, although my family and I made a transition last year to Franklin, that's we're still very connected uh, and a part of uh, of that legacy there. Man, like. There's so much in that. Do I want to do my other questions? You said several key points in there that just, I'm going to have to go back and really listen to this. Um, the whole we thing. I mean, that's, that's just huge. I've, I've heard this story before. I think, but I think you described it just then in a way it's a little bit different than I have heard it before. And now my brain's kind of frazzled because, you know, being part of, you know, GMA and the whole kingdom family movement, uh, my heart, my wife's heart is really about kingdom family, running this race together, you know, not just building an organization, but building something where people come in and they feel like they're at home. And it sounds like uh, Pastor Lynn was really able to create that environment there. And uh, I was in Pensacola at the time. I kind of wish I would have made the trek over the Jubilee a, a few more times. You know, the revival was amazing. Um, I think an element that we're seeing today being added to the church through voices like your voice, through voices like Lace and, you know, uh, Mama Heidi Baker and, and Pastor Bill Johnson, different voices are adding the family values to the church and just meaning you, knowing you, knowing your heart, which kind of feeds into our next question. I feel like, you know, they were really, you know, Lynn and his son were really pioneers in kingdom family. You're seeing something not only continue from one generation to the next, but expand from one generation to the next and not just through a bloodline, but through the bloodline. And I think, you know, I, I know that the family there would, would say, Oh no, he's our son. He's our brother. He's our father. I know they would look at you with the same tenderness and care. And I think just the things that you're doing in the way that you prophesy is beginning to build this understanding in the earth. It's one thing to have an idea, but it's another thing to have your life be able to model it. And I think what they kind of modeled on one level in one area and one generation and one influence through you and through the different people who've come out of that family context is beginning to be revealed. And they were definitely forerunners. Question number two, when I hear you prophesy, you know, whether it's to me, um, oh, my, Alicia says hi, by the way. She's like, don't forget to tell them. <laughs> Well, hello. Great to yes, yes. Great to receive your greetings, and uh, I wish you were sitting next to your husband because this uh, podcast would go to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when she hears that, I'm going. Thanks, thanks, bro. You just got me massive, massive brownie points. <laughs> yeah. When you prophesy, it's with tenderness. It's with care. You may not know the person, but you're seeing them the way that God sees them, and you can really feel that. And it's precise. It's with clarity. But when you prophesy, you're protecting that person, but you're still able to bring exactly what God's telling you. How are you able to cultivate um, such language like that and to be able to prophesy in that manner? Uh, I, I look at people through the lens of love, and I hear the voice of God uh, for people through, through his heart. And uh, I, I ask myself this question uh, every day. What's it like to be ministered to by me? What's it like to receive a word from me? Is it is it harsh or wow. is it loving? Wow. Uh, I think, you know, I judge scripture. I, I'm sorry, I judge prophecy two ways. Um, does it line up with the word of God? Because God doesn't contradict himself. And the second way, does it sound like a loving father talking to a son or a daughter? Mm. And um, because that's how he talks to us through the new covenant. It's, it's not through anger. It's not based on um, our behavior or 
how we perform, but it's based on our identity in him. And so uh, be, coming out of brokenness, coming out of uh, ha- having an orphan spirit, um, you know, I, I want to put myself on the other side of the microphone, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I realize that I'm not just um, giving a word, but God's trusting me with somebody's heart, their life, their destiny. Um, it's not really about future or fortune. It's really about life. And sometimes it's about life and death. And so how I portray that or how I, what I say is just, or how I say is just as important as what I say. And I could say something with the wrong tone. It can be completely missed. And so I also um, really feel it's important just to take my time. So I never want to get in a hurry to get through a prayer line or people in the room. I, I want to look at the person in front of me like they're the only person uh, in the room. Um, does that mean that there's a lot of long nights? Absolutely. Um, but but sometimes it's as simple, you know, it really is Heidi lives out, life lives out. It's, it's really stopping for the one and, and just, you know, loving the one you're with. I've seen you really cultivate that well. Um, you know, there's been times when in different meetings when the night has gone really long and I'll begin to look around the room and hardly anyone's left. They're leaning in. They're engaged. And you don't see that. You'll see different prophetic people. They're kind of ministering and doing different things, and people start checking out. But like you said, I, I think there's a, several which um, elements that you brought forth in there. How would I like to be prophesied to? And then that draws people into the way that you're prophesying. I mean, everyone does want a prophetic word, and they're going to hang out when prophetic ministry is happening. But again, the way you cultivate it, I've seen whole rooms you just wait. They're waiting in the presence. They're waiting for the word. They're, they're engaged in what's happening. So I think you've really cultivated that well. You, you kind of sort of already answered my third question. How do you feel mothering and fathering in the prophetic will kind of help set up the next phase of the next, the coming generations with the understanding or the identity of the prophetic itself or the prophetic office? How do you think mothering and fathering kind of tie into where the prophetic is going? It's a great question. I, I think to follow up the last question and then move into this one, um, I, I want to bring everybody into the living room of God. Uh, you know, that's kind of a picture to me of, of God sitting in on his throne, telling his kids stories or telling them about their life or what he sees in them. And, and so that, I think, causes people to, to engage, right? When, when the father's listening and he has something to say, um, you know, pe- people are uh, engaged in their listening. Uh, I think that we have to parent, uh, we have to parent the, the prophetic, we have to father it, mother it. Um, and I would add pastor it. Um, you know, I travel, so I'm here where I am this week, uh, but I'll leave on Saturday. Um, but somebody's got to stay behind to pastor the prophecies or to parent the, the calling and giftings of, of God on people's lives. Uh, I remember, uh, David, um, in 1999, the summer of 99, um, I traveled to Houston, Texas with my pastor. Um, you know, he, he was a great preacher. He could preach his guts out, and he loved the presence of God and ministering to people. And uh, then he would turn me loose, and I'd start prophesying. And, and at the end of the meetings uh, that time, um, he was talking to the pastor in the back while I was ministering. I finished ministering. And these amazing folks gave me this 38 prophetic, 38 minute prophetic word. Uh, back then, we were using ca- cassettes, you know. So it was absolutely <laughs> the, the front, the front, the back, the front, the back, and another front. So you know, three cassettes, and uh, I was excited. But we got home really late that night. The next morning, it was a Saturday morning. We were, I was living with him at the time, so I was uh, sitting having breakfast with him. And I, I said, Pastor, it looks like I'm not going to be with you much longer. And I handed him these three tapes. And I said, there's all this great stuff I'm about to do. And he goes, oh, really? And uh, <laughs> he, he listened to the, you know, pull out the recorder. And we listened to it for 38 minutes. Uh, at the end of it, he said, that's really good. But you're not going to do any of it till I tell you that you can. Wow. And my, my flesh, the old David wanted to say, he doesn't believe in me. He's rejecting me. Yeah. He doesn't. You know, but he realized that the calling was great. The word was right. But if I would have stepped into that with my character at the time, it would have destroyed me. Uh, And I'm convinced that that moment was a destiny defining moment in my life. And it's why 
I've had 20 years of, of integrous ministry since. Um, uh, uh, because that those moments um, when somebody says, that's right, but let's find the timing of God in it. Yeah. can only be done by a father or a mother, you know. Mm. Um, you know, if, if you know, uh, and I see the calling of God in, in my kids. So I have a son, he's 19, uh, finished his first year of, of ministry school. Uh, he can preach better than me. He's got a great healing anointing. He's he's prophetic, um, but I also know, you know, that that, that there's a time and a season um, for for that to come to fruition. And if I throw him in, expect him to do what I'm doing now, um, you know, it could be counterproductive or or devastating to him. So uh, my job is to is to cultivate that calling, that gifting, those words over his life, and then push him. Uh, pushing forward uh, in that so uh, i hope that i hope that makes sense but. no it made perfect sense um on the one hand he, he gets to start out kind of in a sense you're giving him all the fatherly input and advice of where you're currently at not where you were in 1999 although where you were in 1999 is added wisdom to where you're at now so he gets to start out ahead he gets to start out with you kind of slingshotting him forward that you still have the wisdom to say, you know, I can't put you on the racetrack if, if you only know how to, you know, drive a normal car. You, you know, you might drive a normal car well, but you can't go get out on the Formula One track and expect to hang with those guys. Yeah. So it's taking it's, that gifting. Yeah. Right. So like, for instance, just last week, he received an invitation to, to go to, to Australia to minister. Wow. And as a 19-year-old kid, that's pretty exciting. Um, as his dad, that's super exciting. And, uh, you know, I want him to, to celebrate that and going. And so we were, you know, we we're talking and, and he, you know, I said, what do you feel? He said, I just want to pray about it for a couple of days and, uh, wow. and, and make sure it's where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, and he got a hold of me last night. He's like, dad, I just feel like it's not my time to, to do that. And this is what I'm supposed to be doing instead. And, you know, I said, wow, man, awesome way to go. You're hearing God. That's, I'm proud of you. I, I love you. That's, that's the right decision. And how do, you, um, how do you balance like being proud of your son with the wisdom to give him the choice that he needs to make? And then the guidance of, well, maybe I'd pull back here. Maybe I'll push you out of the nest here. Maybe I'll pull back here. Yeah. I think he's, uh, you know, he's, he's inherited some of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's, there, there was no book as great as my pastor was and is, uh, there's no book like, this is how you do traveling prophetic ministry with a wife and five <laughs> kids. And, and so there's, uh, you know, there's things I've done wrong, um, you know, where I, I've, I've been gone too much. Um, and, and so, uh, I want them to be able to learn fathering says you can learn from my mistakes as well. So you have access to my whole life, the whole data bank of, of everything right and wrong so um in places where i took everything yet being young in ministry and zealous it was like i took everything that every opportunity that came as it was gone and um, then you realize there was times i went and then there was times i was sent and when i went it was all right but when i was yeah. sent, it was completely you know completely more powerful yeah. and and so i want to give him the opportunity to hear from god himself I want to reinforce that. I want to, I want to say, well, I feel this, I can, can add to what I <clears throat> feel in fatherly advice, but I also want to give him permission to hear from the Lord himself. And so that's where we're at. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still an authority in his life. Uh, I feel like I will be as, you know, until he's, he's married or, or, you know, you know, uh, mature some more, but I'm moving more from authority and in, into influence. Uh, in his life, you know, so uh, those yeah. are exciting things. Well, even the things that you've cultivated in your own personal family become the source for, you know, fathering the prophetic, pastoring the prophetic in a, a, at large. And I think just, you know, you're, you're willing, to, one of the things that I, I really kind of cherish when I get around your ministry is that the fact that you're vulnerable, you're, you're not, you're not putting on a show. You're saying, here I am. Here's where I've, I've done great. Here's where I could have done better. And then you freely give that for people to take. And I think that's why you really um, embody someone who is fathering the prophetic. Um, because you, 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 don't, you don't see that as much. And I think part of the reason you don't see it as much is because, you know, 
maybe some of the people who are out there didn't have the opportunity to get fathered, but they had the opportunity. Now, because you're seeing it arise more in our generation, but um, I think that's one of the things that you really add. So bro, I'm so grateful that you took the time. I know you're on a ministry trip now to just uh, come be a part of the vlog. You're just, I, I just, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna have to go back through this and take my own notes. So if you're watching out there, um, make sure to give this a second listen, take some time. Each thing that David shared, just pray through that and uh, see where you're at in the journey and ask yourself, you know, ask Holy Spirit how, you know, what David shared from his years of experience and wisdom can be added to your life. So bro, how can people like find out more about you, get connected, invite you to come minister, things like that? Yeah, so my website's fathersheartministries.org. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at DavyWag or on Twitter at the Davy Wag, Facebook, Father's Heart Ministries, David Wagner. Um, and those are the best ways. Um, I'm more into Instagram than, than other things. I like to just kind of show off the fish I catch and the places I'm at. Um, but we get ready to, to launch some things uh, new this year. My daughter's really helping me with admin and techie stuff that I'm not good at. Uh, but if they want to connect social media or, or uh, on the website, I'm, I'm pretty quick to to respond even myself and so it's a great way to engage awesome and we'll have all of those links below thanks to uh thanks again man for coming on today and taking the time love you bro appreciate it love you too man thanks <laughs>